Hi and welcome everyone, I'm Gavin Lon. In this video I want to answer the question, is it still worthwhile becoming a professional software developer in the mid 2020s? In order to answer this question, I'm going to share my personal experiences when I was first starting out as a software developer and compare these experiences with what it takes in today's world to become a software engineer. When I was first starting out well over 20 years ago in the late 1990s, there was no question as to whether programmers were in demand. If you had the right skills and could prove it, you could almost certainly get employed pretty quickly. The demand for developers was super high. I mean, I was able to get my first programming job in the late 1990s living in a small town on the east coast of South Africa. The 1990s in South Africa was a pretty volatile time politically and jobs were scarce. Well, South Africa has never been the easiest place in the world in which to make a living. But once I was employed, I went from strength to strength and never looked back. After gaining my first two years of experience in South Africa, I moved to London, England and worked there for most of my adult life. I can tell you that I've been fortunate enough to have enjoyed a great career as a programmer. But the question I'd like to ask in this video is, is it still worthwhile becoming a programmer in 2024 and beyond. I mean, is the demand for programmers still good or at least sufficient enough to warrant the effort needed to become an employable programmer? In the mid 2020s, the world is so different in many ways to the way the world was in the late 1990s when I was first starting out as a programmer. When people spoke about AI, for example, in the 1990s, they were mostly talking about a mythical futuristic prophecy. So AI was very much an abstract idea in the 1990s. Now when people talk about AI, often they talk about the threat of artificial intelligence. So AI is no longer this abstract idea. It is very real and having a very real impact on our lives. One particular impact is the effect it may have on our careers. How will AI affect programmers moving forward? Will it diminish the demand for programmers and the responsibilities of programmers to such an extent that becoming a programmer will no longer be worthwhile, no longer worth the time it takes to become an employable programmer? So here is the short answer. Demand in 2024 is not diminishing at all. In fact, thanks to a thriving digital economy, programmers are in extremely high demand. Not only do I recommend learning to code, for those wanting to get into technology as a career, I also recommend learning to code just for most people in general. We are continuing to hurtle faster than ever into a forever expanding digital world. So in the future, the average person who isn't a professional software developer may still want to have at least a basic knowledge of coding. For example, to program household appliances, to program a security alarm, your lights, an entertainment system, you name it. You may even want to automate certain functions for your car. But let's look specifically at future prospects for professional programmers. According to research from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, employment for software developers is projected to grow 22% from 2020 to 2030, much faster than average for all occupations. The demand for programmers is set to increase, so I would certainly recommend programming as a career choice to anyone with a desire to do so. With demand comes excellent salaries and it seems you are still able to make an above average salary as a programmer in comparison to other occupations. So let's look at some of the pros of becoming a programmer moving forward in the mid 2020s compared to 20 odd years ago. You have tremendous reach when it comes to promoting your skills to the world. So if I was starting out now as a developer for example in South Africa that unfortunately still has a huge unemployment rate. I would, for example, create a website to promote my skills and I would create loads of coding projects. I would create challenging applications and make the code for these applications publicly available on GitHub. In today's world, even if you are in a country that, for example, has a high unemployment rate, you are still able to attract the attention of employers, both locally and employers who perhaps live in, let's say, more prosperous countries like for example the UK, the US, Canada or Australia. This could lead to you potentially being sponsored by an employer in one of those countries. 
and therefore you could potentially move over to that country to work. Perhaps you'll eventually even be able to gain a permanent working visa and work there on a long-term basis. Even if you don't want to leave your home country, there's also a potential to work for an employer based in another country remotely. So in today's world, the internet infrastructure is advanced enough where it is easy, for example, to participate in virtual meetings and interact with co-workers and employers that live in different countries throughout the world. So the internet has really created a global village. Even if you are from one of those more prosperous countries, but you are, for example, finding that your living expenses are exceedingly high and you want to live in a country where the cost of living is much lower. Working remotely is not only possible in today's world, it has in recent years become quite common. When I was first getting started as a programmer, the most viable way to get a job was through someone you know already working for a company looking for developers, recommending you to the right people in that company. The other most common way was by sending your CV or resume to employment agencies. I personally was fortunate enough to be recommended to a local software development company by a lady with whom I was studying computer science. She had recently gained employment with a local software development company that was looking to expand and hire more developers. In fact, this small software company was just about to be bought out by the third largest software company in South Africa at the time, when I first joined. So I ended up getting two years of solid programming experience working for a fairly large corporate before I moved from South Africa to London. When I moved over to London, I naively did it the hard way. What I mean by this is that I handed in my one month notice at my job in South Africa and moved to London without first securing a job with a company in London. I really don't recommend doing this. I found out that many of the employment agencies in London wouldn't even see you if you didn't have at least two years development experience. I of course at this point had two years of software development experience. This was great, but the unexpected barrier that I faced was that many vacancies required that candidates have at least two years of London experience, which of course is something I didn't have at that time. So it's the old saying of beggars can't be choosers. So the first job that I accepted was let's say not an ideal position for me, but I was able to get my first two years of London experience and progressed from there. So I wouldn't say that it was easier to get employed as a software developer in the late 90s. In many ways, it is far easier in the mid 2020s. And there are a lot more opportunities available to aspiring professional software developers. What hasn't changed is that you still have to apply yourself and you have to consistently work towards your goal. In the vast majority of cases, nobody will give you anything for free. So you have to really prove yourself and earn your way to the position where you want to be. My advice is pace yourself, have faith and fortitude and you will get there. Just keep striving. The only way that you can lose is if you give up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments section your experiences in finding a job or not finding a job if that's the case in the country where you live. All other comments are of course welcome. Your insights are always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. And please ring the bell so that you'll be notified when new content is released from this channel. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, you can do this at my Buy Me A Coffee webpage at this URL. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to follow me on X, my username is at GavinLonDigital. I hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care.